Check out this robotic hand from Westwood Robotics. This open source robotic hand is currently being used on the Themis robot. So this is a three finger robotic hand with seven motors. So this right here is a thumb. There's two motors. So one degree of freedom here, the second degree of freedom here. And these other two degrees of freedom, this one is coupled together by a gear here that allows the two fingers to move back and forth. And then each finger has two more motors that can bend in this direction and it has a pretty large range of motion. All these motors here are daisy chained together and they have unique IDs that allow different communication to each motor. These are the dynamic cell motors I went over previously on my channel. You can see it could be used to hold things like the screwdriver. You can also see it's strong enough to hold this heavy camera gimbal that I designed a while back. If you're new here, my name is Kevin and I've been doing robotics and AI for 10 plus years and have lots of resources on my channel. I also have a master's robotics and AI bundle as well as the robotics project bundle. Go ahead and check it out at kevinwoodrobotics.com. I'll be using these parts right here to assemble the ENO2 OP robot hand from Westwood Robotics. First, we want to prepare these idler pulleys. So the way it works is you have this rubber piece and you want to put the screw inside like this and push it all the way through. Take your actuators and make sure to label them one through seven and set the IDs in the software. Now taking the actuators with ID one, three, and five, make sure to have the long, short, short, long, and short and long. You can verify the orientation here so you don't mix up between your left and right. Next, take the two parts for the proximal phalanx M. You're gonna notice you need to put in five dowel pins. So you have one, two, three, and then four and five. Next, take the parts for the proximal phalanx, which will be a mirror image of the previous one we just saw. So now taking the two parts, we put them together and you want to use four M2 screws on this side. This is gonna be the M2 by fives here. And then the Euler pulley we put on this side as well. So you do this for the same for the proximal phalanx and the proximal phalanx M. Make sure that the proximal phalanx is ID1 and the proximal phalanx M is ID3. So it should look like this when it's assembled. It's gonna be the mirror image of the two. So one is pointing to the left and one is pointing to the right. So when you're assembling these motors, make sure to not move it out of the zero position. You're gonna see this little line here. This is a zero position. So make sure that it's aligned. You can also tell by these three marks so this should be pointing this way where the line is. Next, taking ID4, you want to put the middle phalanx M here with four M2 screws. There should be a dowel pin that goes here. And then for this part, we have the ID3. You want to go ahead and secure this piece on. This is a middle phalanx M, and this will go on with two M2 by 12 screws here. Some of the cable is gonna be pressed down, so don't be afraid to put a little bit of pressure to hold it down. You can repeat the same process for ID2 here. This is for the middle phalanx, and then you have the ID1 here. This is gonna be for the proximal phalanx. Now putting it together, we have IDs one and two here. So we assemble the two and you want to route the cable all the way through. There's gonna be a channel through here that passes through the body, comes out on the other side, and then you connect it to this actuator. You're gonna put two screws here, two by 12s, and then there's gonna be an Euler pulley that goes right here. And then you repeat the same process for IDs three and four, and it should look like this when it's assembled. By the way, if you're looking to get your parts 3D printed but don't have a 3D printer, check out PCBWay, the sponsor of this video. Just come here to CNC 3D printing, choose 3D printing. It's really easy, you drop in your STL parts, choose a quantity, material, color, and process, say if you need threads or not, fill out the rest, and then come up here to submit your part for review. Check out my links in video description for discounts. So now go ahead and take the distal phalanx and you want to slide it into this bottom actuator. So this one's ID2. What you're gonna notice is that when you look at this, one side is gonna be a little bit higher. The higher side is gonna be the side that goes to the cable because the other finger is very similar. So when you slide it in, it's going to, you're gonna have to bend the cables down like this and then just push it all the way through. And the two holes should align up right here. Then put the two M2 
by 12 screws and then put it inside. Once you have the other side assembled, it should look like this. So it will be the mirror image of the other one that we just put together. Now I'll take one of the 126CZ bearing and put it inside the slave gear. Put it like so and then press it in. When you press it in, it should be flush, then you know it's fully assembled. Then we take four M3x10 screws to secure the gear on. Now taking the palm housing, we could take the motor with ID7 and we put it inside of here. Once we put it inside, we could secure it using four M2x12 screws. There's also two dowel pins you have to insert right here. Now taking the master gear, we have four more screws. Now we could go ahead and take the index subassembly and secure it onto the gear with these four M3x10 screws. Now we take the slave shaft and put it through this hole right here. And we have a screw that will go in on the back to secure it. Bearing is going to slide down here. Then we're going to take a thrust bearing and put one over here. The previous finger, the bearing should have been on this side with the screws and not on this side. This side is where it's supposed to go inside of here where we just place the bearing. So go ahead and place it on top and press the bearings down. Now I'll take the two thrust bearings and put it right here. Put the cover plate on and insert an M3 here and M2.5 here. Put a bearing inside of here and take an M3 screw with this washer and put it inside and screw it in. With this part, take two screws and turn on both sides to tighten. Try back driving the fingers to see how it feels. If it's too tight, you could try loosening these screws. Now take the thumb middle phalanx and take ID number 5, assemble it on the bottom, and then take ID number 6 and assemble it on the top. Now taking a thumb assembly, you want to insert the cables through the base. So we have the short and long cable. The long one is the one facing you, so you want to pass it through. You don't want to notice there's channels here, so this is where the cables will be going through. So go ahead and slide it in. You can see how the cables here bend and then wrap around through the channel and comes out here. And this is how the bottom cable came out. We're gonna take the long end of the cable from ID5 and then connect it to ID6. Now we could close it off with this piece, add two M2 by 12 screws and then the idler screw. To complete the thumb assembly, we have these two pieces here. We have these dowel pins to align and then we just put it where the motor is and close it together. Secure it with four M2 screws here and then the idler. So we're gonna take this cable that was from motor five that was not used, we'll connect to ID7 here and then the power board will go right on top like this. Now we finish up the cabling, we would take the cable from motor ID1. So this one is gonna pass through the hole here from the shell and then connect to the right side. The same thing will happen on the left side for motor ID3. And then for ID7, we have this short cable that will connect here to this right here. The last step is to secure with the screws here so that this whole shell can stay tied together. If you have one of these bare actuators, you could mount the bottom of your hand to here, then your hand could have a rotation. As a final step for cosmetics, you could wrap the cables with tape or spiral wrap, and you could see that there's a cap that you added here at the end.